So let's talk tests. Yes. What would you say are some of the most common issues you see in these tests? Imbalance in the microbiome, lack of diversity, a lot of nutrient deficiencies. Even one round of antibiotics could kill off 90% of your microbiome. Just one round. You've been educating me about mold. Yeah. How often are you seeing mold in people's tests? Very common. Coffee, nuts, dried fruit, cereal. Different foods can have mold in them that's not visible to the eye. Food sensitivity is highly controversial. Yeah, the results change all the time. And that's mm. true. Food sent just because you're sensitive to certain things right now doesn't mean you're gonna be sensitive to it in three months. The reality of our world right now is there are a lot of toxins out there. If we're not dealing with the emotional stuff or if we don't really realize how our body utilizes the things we're eating, then you'll stay unhealthy and unhappy or whatever else the list goes on. It's all connected and mm -hmm. I, I, I just think it's mind-blowing. Guys, I am so excited for today's episode. We have my naturopath and friend, Dr. Sam, on the show. She is a concierge naturopath here in LA who specializes in overall wellness, gut health, and mind-body connection. I originally found Dr. Sam through a recommendation from my facialist, Candice, and since then we've been on a journey of healing together. We did seven different tests, I counted, I think it's seven, mm -hmm. that revealed some amazing results and some not so amazing results that we've been working on improving ever since. What I love about Dr. Sam is that her interest isn't just in health, but in trauma and emotional health as well. So today we're gonna discuss some simple tips and hacks to, that can make a huge difference to your health and overall happiness. Dr. Sam, welcome to the show. Hi, Mari, it's so good to be here. I'm so freaking excited. I know, because we always have these amazing conversations and we're like, ah, no, literally. we can talk about this on the podcast. So. Every time we have an appointment, I'm gonna take these off actually, because they make me some weird noise. Every time we're at my house and we have an appointment, we get in these like three hour in-depth conversations and every time I'm like, I wanna be on the mic right now. I know, it's exciting. I'm so happy because you also go really deep. So it's fun to have these conversations with you. Yeah, and you, I don't know, it's been a crazy journey for me because when I first started working with you, mm -hmm. I figured we'd do the, the gut test and we'd talk about those things, but I didn't know how deep and energetic we'd get with it. And I've learned so much from you. So let's just begin with where your interest came from. How did you become a naturopath? Yeah, so I was born in Iran. We'll start from day one. <laughs> yeah, please. I was born in Iran, and my grandma always used natural therapies. If like anyone had a toothache, anything going on, she always had natural remedies up her sleeves. But then coming to America, I was 10. Um, we kept going back and forth from 3 to 10. So I grew up with those Persian roots, right? But then here in high school, my period was irregular. So I looked healthy on the outside. But my period, like, it, it wasn't regular. We went to multiple doctors. No one could figure out why am I getting it every six months versus every month. And that's a sign of, you know, something going on internally. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I went to a regular MD, OBGYN, and he put me on the pill immediately. And I gained probably 20 pounds within a month. And I, I, I'm tiny, right? So I was like, what is going on? It affected my mood. It affected a lot of different things with me. So then I was like, I need to figure out first how to get back, how to get my body back, right? Because gaining that much weight in a month isn't easy on your body. So then I started becoming really interested in nutrition because I wasn't thinking, oh, it's the pill. I was like, oh, I must be doing something wrong because no one told me that it's the pill, the hormones. I was like, I'm doing something wrong. I have to eat better. I have to exercise. I have to do all these things. So I became interested in nutrition, went to undergrad to study nutritional sciences. And there I learned that nutrition plays such a big role in the body, but also working at the hospital. I was also a weight loss counselor at Jenny Craig. I, I had no, <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I had no idea. It was such an eye opening experience because if you think about it, I mean, we won't get into what Jenny Craig does, but what I learned, my takeaway message from Jenny Craig was a lot of people would come to me for our weekly sessions where they pick up their food and go home. And during those 15, 20 minute sessions, I had women opening up to me about their emotional reasons of why they ate their entire week of food in one sitting 
and then they had to resort to other foods right so then my mind clicked i was really young but i was like there is an emotional aspect to health i was like there is something that people aren't even looking at you could know all the best knowledge you could i mean everything's out there for us to learn right but if we're not dealing with the emotional stuff or if we don't really realize how our body utilizes the things we're eating then you'll stay unhealthy and unhappy or whatever else the list goes on so that's where i was like ah nutrition's awesome but i wasn't fully satisfied i was like i want to do more I got a little distracted and almost went to dental school, which I thought there was a beautiful art to it, but thank God I didn't because I feel like I wouldn't be who I am today if I hadn't gone to naturopathic medical school. I truly believe there was a huge healing for me when I went to school because I dealt with some of my own emotional stuff that I had been bottling up my whole life yeah. until, I, until I went there. And I looked at it, your first year of naturopathic medical school you do a lot, you have to go through a year of counseling, you have to do so much on yourself before you get to see patients. And it was really cool. And so you were kind of on a personal journey at the same time as you know, you were healing yourself and learning how to heal others too. Yeah. Which yeah. I feel like is so, like kind of what, how do you say it, naturopathy? Naturopathic medicine. That's kind of what naturopathy. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. naturopathic <laughs> medicine in itself feels very like symbiotic yes in nature mm -hmm. what would you say is your overall ethos when it comes to wellness so i always look for what are the obstacles to health mm. right because we could be doing everything right and if there's one obstacle in the way all the amazing stuff you're doing won't clear your path mm. so my whole thing is really understanding the person in front of me to understand what's getting in the way of us because the stack of tests right we run them i love it because when we look at health it's multifaceted so i want to look at the physical body right i want to look at what's going on with our biochemistry but also i want to look at our mental health i want to look at past trauma how are we still holding on to that is there unresolved stuff going on so it's the whole picture or what type of relationships are we in right now what type of relationship do we have with ourselves right what what's the conversation that goes on in our head mm -hmm. those are the things where i'm like you could be eating the most perfect diet exercising doing all the things and it just doesn't matter yeah. it doesn't so as you know i like to ask my patients why like why do you want to work with me why do you want to be at your optimal health is it what is it right because that the reason for me might be different than your reason so i like to go down that path of what's your why of feeling your best and also how do you live your health healthiest and happiest so powerful and i think when you first sat with me it was a three hour conversation where I was ready to tell you every supplement I took, every food I ate, all the exercise I did, I was I could rattle that off easily because mm -hmm. I am a very disciplined individual. And then you kind of kept asking these questions that were, it's not that they were making me uncomfortable, but I was taken aback mm -hmm. because no one had ever looked into my eyes and said, what is the relationship that you have with yourself? Or how do you speak to yourself? Or do you ever take a break? And those were the questions where I was stumped, truly. And after meeting you and being on this journey, I have come to realize that I am, ever since I lost the weight that I did, I kind of became obsessed with living optimally. So I, I did that. I work out the right way. I eat the right way. I drink enough water. I take all the supplements. I'm pretty crazy when it comes to that stuff. But the other side is still so unhealed and I'm getting there I'm learning and I'm learning to give myself grace thanks to people like you and my therapist um, but it really is it's a it's so important it's a, it's a massive piece of the puzzle and if we don't talk about it there's a missing piece and I almost wonder like with regular doctors that conversation isn't being had yeah yeah and I want to say something about you by the way you're probably one of the most dedicated patients I have ever had. You are so on top of it. You are just like, it's not a front that you're putting out there. It's you are the most dedicated. You're like, I'm doing this. You create a list. You have a protocol that you follow. If I tell you to do this, you're like on it. So 
kudos to you. Like you are doing incredible. I want you to know that. And even on the emotional side, like during our first visit, like you had just met me, right? And I don't always, like I, I watch to see how the person in front of me, like where are they at and how far can I push? Mm. Because I told you this during the first visit after we were done, I was like, thank you. Thank you for being so open. Thank you for being so willing and vulnerable and sharing so much because it just shows how ready you are to go through this journey. Yeah. So I want you to recognize that about yourself too. Thank you. Thank you. And if I'm so passionate about health and genuinely, I think what's so fun about working together is you're geeking out on your end because you love this stuff, clearly, because you're an naturopath. I'm on my end geeking out and we're like, oh my God, like look at these results. Like think about yes. all the things we could do and we get so excited about the solution. Um, but yeah, I really have been pushing myself to be more open because I think I hit a breaking point actually with my healing yeah. I hit the point where it was like okay I'm doing all the things yes there's still I'm, I'm not quite breaking through the way I want to and now I kind of see there's even more work to be done yes yes and it's on the physical level energetic level spiritual level like we've talked about this right yeah it's not just physical so let's talk tests yes Everyone is so curious about the tests we've been running. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest question right now for women especially is where can I get these tests? What are they? People are becoming more educated about what they are, but they don't know how to get them. So let's start with which tests do you recommend? Yeah, so it all depends on what's going on with the person and the journey they wanna go on, right? Some people come to me and they're like, I'm only gonna start with one test. And after hearing their story in the first visit, then I choose what's the most appropriate thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and some people like you come and they're like, I wanna do all of it because I wanna go on this long, longer journey of mm -hmm. figuring out how do we put the puzzle together and really optimize my health. So um, I of course start with the gut always because that is the root cause of a lot of our issues. Not only are the foods that we're putting in our body, are they not grown in the same soil that were grown in 100 years ago where we're getting all these nutrients, but also there's a lot of pesticides and chemicals and things added in there, which causes gut issues and gut permeability, which then causes food sensitivities, you know? So we wanna look at the, how is the status of our gut, our microbiome? Do we have enough diversity? Are we avoiding things too much that decreases our diversity? Like for example, if we're not eating enough fiber, it's not feeding the right microbes, right? Mm -hmm. So I typically start with the gut. Meaning poop test. Poop test, yes, yes. I start with the special poop test that we do. Mm -hmm. It's everyone's favorite. It's terrible. Oh, it's awful. I'm like, wear three masks when you do your poop test because. It's awful. Greg is actually, he has a test waiting for him mm -hmm. at the house and he is not doing it. He's yeah. procrastinating. Yeah. It is. I understand. I understand scary, why. It's scary, but like so interesting and eye-opening when you get the results back. It really is because not only does it tell us about your microbiome, which in your microbiome you create your neurotransmitters, you create, um, you know, bacteria that breaks down fiber for you so your digestion changes you it affects everything the mind skin or the gut skin connection the gut brain connection all of that so mm -hmm. that's where i start because from there we could alter diet we could um feed the bacteria what it needs recommend the right probiotics all those things digestive enzymes but it is an annoying test and trust me i've done it and i'm like oh like it's that's not fun but it's only like three seconds like it's three seconds yeah, and it's then fast. you have all this information that you can go off exactly of. and i do want to talk about my results and the things mm -hmm. we've been doing but i guess let's go through all the tests yeah. so people know and then we can hop into detail okay perfect so we so, did the gut test we did the gut test you want to start there because we could start there Here let's go. go let's um want to go in order hmm this is the gut test. Let's go through all the tests you recommend to people and then okay. we can do results. Oh, just all of them. Yeah. Okay, 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 perfect. So the test I, typ I typically recommend, stool analysis, mm -hmm. right? Looking at the microbiome. I typically run the Dutch test because let's be honest, a lot of people are running in their sympathetic nervous system yep. and that affects everyone differently at different stages of life, right? So 
to be clear, sympathetic nervous system is when you're in fight or flight, like constantly on. Most people are. <laughs> I just like, I. that's just so me. Like I'm constantly freaking out. Yeah. But we're getting better. Um, so getting Dutch better. test is mm -hmm. cortisol and hormones. Yes. So we look at stress hormones, which cortisol is one of them. And then we look at um, sex hormones too. So estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, their metabolites, your detox pathways of detoxing each of those hormones um it's really great it gives me so much information because also looking at it in that process not only do we think about stress but there are certain pathways that you detox your hormones where it's related to toxins and mm. mitochondrial dysfunction and all of that so it gives it's not just like oh this is low let's supplement it to get it high it's like okay why is this low yeah let's address it from the stress perspective but also supporting your mitochondria supporting um nutrients that could be deficient that impact that yeah so. one thing you emphasized to me from the beginning was all of this is connected mm -hmm. and once we did have all those results you were really showing me how things went hand in hand yep so what else do you recommend? That's the beauty of doing all of it. Um, then I I love to do a micronutrient test, which is the one that we do. We do this one called NutriPro from Vibrant America. And I love that one because it looks at your different genetic mutations. Oh, and yeah. remember that one? And also your actual nutrient status. So we look at how is your genetics playing a role and the way you absorb and break down nutrients and how well do you take them in. So then some people are like chronically low in certain vitamins. So we always wanna look at that. I always wanna not just look at what nutrients they're missing, but how is genetics playing a role? Because then I could recommend certain diets that are higher in those nutrients. Like we looked at yours, your vitamin C was lower. Mm -hmm. um, and I think- Vitamin A. Vitamin A. So all those things, I just love that test because it gives us such a big picture. Oh my God, that one was crazy because yeah. I could literally see my dad has glaucoma mm -hmm. and vitamin A is, or vitamin A deficiency is directly correlated with eye issues. Yeah. And I yeah. saw that and I was like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I can possibly prevent having eye issues later on in life if I get enough vitamin A. Yeah. I mean, mind blowing. Yeah, I think Isn't that, that is crazy? so freaking cool. It's okay, so cool. So, so the vitamin so cool. test. Uh huh. And then I do a food sensitivity test mm. because we look at in the current, like right now, what are you sensitive to? Food sensitivities. It's kind of like, um, what's that word when it's, um, you know what I'm trying to say? Subject, objective, subjective. When there's a lot of controversy. That's oh, that. yeah. <laughs> yeah, food sensitivity is highly controversial. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It's highly controversial. And some people are like, no, it, you don't want to run it because uh, the, the results change all the time. And that's mm. true. Food sent just because you're sensitive to certain things right now doesn't mean you're going to be sensitive to it in three months. Typically, when I see leaky gut, I see a lot of foods that my patients are eating show up on their food sensitivity tests. So then we avoid those for a little bit just to take the pressure off the gut. So that's why I love running food sensitivity tests because it does make a huge difference in now, yeah. right? I don't, I don't wanna promote people avoiding foods forever, but like you know, we're like, let's avoid it for a month mm -hmm. and then reintroduce it just to take the inflammation down, just to allow the gut to heal on its own yep. while we're doing all the other things to heal the gut. So that's where I stand with food sensitivity testing and it makes a huge difference in people's skin and energy levels and chronic headaches. I mean, yeah, and skin was a big uh, issue for me and mm -hmm. honestly, we're still fighting with it right yeah. now. Um, so we definitely wanted to check out my food sensitivities because there were things on there that were surprising that we'll get into. Yeah. Then we also tested for toxins, correct? Yes, yes, environmental toxins. Okay. Because as much as I hate to talk about this, as much as I'm like, I don't want people to feel, to be scared or to feel like they have to live in a bubble, but that is the reality of our world right now is there are a lot of toxins out there. And those toxins play a huge role in our body because let's say if our liver is doing so much work to produce our hormones, detox naturally everything we get exposed to, then the burden gets so high on the liver. Mm. So then these things build up in the body and they can travel anywhere in the body and cause autoimmune conditions, inflammation, all the things. So I like to look at how your body is responding to 
the different environmental toxins. So then we can bring down that inflammation, bring down the load, the toxic load, and then and get your detox pathways open so you can actually detox properly. Yeah. Was this the test that also was for the parasite or was that gut health? No, that was in your stool test. Yeah. Yeah. So when we do the microbiome stool analysis, it looks at parasites, it looks at fungi, it looks at um, just regular bacteria that are supposed to be there. Mm. And then pathogenic bacteria that if you have too much of them, they could cause issues. Okay. So that's where we got we'll hop into that as well yeah did we get all seven was that all seven Um, i think we did so the wellness panel goes with the food sensitivity test it just tells you how you want to eat okay so it gives you like a plan specifically for you um and then oh what else did we do then we did a basic panel looking at your iron levels your thyroid comprehensive Mm. metabolic panel i like to look at those things um and that's it Because I think we did see a lot of overlap, even with some missing nutrients that affect the thyroid. Yes. Yes, we did. Which is insane. We saw low selenium, Mm -hmm. which really impacts the thyroid. And I know that's something that you want to optimize. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think, why are these tests so difficult to get? So insurance. Insurance Mm -hmm. doesn't cover these tests. So... Um, a lot of doctors don't offer them but because they're pricey, right? But then also the other um, thing is a lot of, let's say, traditionally trained medical doctors, they didn't have the opportunity to learn about functional testing. Their whole role, whether whatever specialty they're in, their role is to keep their patients alive. So are naturopathic doctors, right? But also um, – with naturopathic medicine, we just look at the holistic picture. Mm. So um, when it comes to regular medical trained doctors, now a lot of them are going and getting trained in functional medicine to learn about how the body is connected. But then when there are certain specialties, they're just like, let's just make sure the basic things are in place so the patient is not dying. Right. It's not You're not living optimi- optimally no. necessarily. Mm, yeah. Exactly. So the, there is a paradigm shift that I am seeing, though, with a lot of medical training or, or medical trained, medically trained doctors that are um, that are starting to look at this. So if someone listening wants to have access to the tests we did, mm-hmm. is there a best way of doing that by speaking with a naturopath like you? Yeah. Naturopathic doctors most of them run a lot of these tests um there's also different sites where you can order these tests Mm. and and then find a doctor to interpret them for you um i don't recommend running them and just letting them sit there or trying to interpret them yourself because there is so much detail that some of these tests look like a whole different language oh it's insane (laughs) i i remember when they came through and i was so excited Mm -hmm. and i logged in to see and i was like oh I'm going to need Dr. Sam. I couldn't figure out what yeah. any of it meant because it's a lot of long words, a lot of sciencey words. You can kind of figure it out, but you really need a, a naturopath to talk you through it. Yeah, yeah. Because also even the Dutch test, you know, I mean, that one looks like a whole other yeah. alien language. But yeah. But like even if you're like, okay, I can read that I'm low in estrogen or testosterone. Well, there's so many reasons you could be low in this and you want to the person your provider to really explore that with you yeah. because you don't want to just take let's say bioidentical estrogen or you don't want to just put a patch on why yeah. you're low in certain things yeah that would just be like taking medication i i look at that as like okay no we need to get to the root cause of it and address that because i've had patients that had crazy vertigo or dizziness where literally just they were dehydrated Wow. And they had gone to so many different doctors and we looked at them. I looked, I ran some tests. I'm like, you're just dehydrated. Hmm. So like there are things like that where like you don't even need to go that deep. Right. And I think seeing the numbers in front of you and having a very clear understanding of what's going on in your body helps so much when it comes to like getting yourself motivated to make a change because when you can see oh shoot like i was low on selenium that might be affecting my thyroid is that what it's called selenium yeah okay i'm low on selenium i want to add that in 
I can see that my gut is damaged and mm-hmm. that makes me feel like I want to heal it. Yes. When I when it's all up in the air and I'm not sure and I'm just having symptoms and people are telling me to go on medication, mm-hmm. it's so much less motivating to me. And then also I think it sucks because when someone's struggling with a health problem and they are deeply rooted in it, whether it's acne or gut issues, fatigue, yeah. you're so desperate that taking a pill and taking kind of an easy route is the more attractive method like even when I was younger and I had such bad acne and I was offered antibiotics I was like yeah give me anything you can to make this better because it hurts physically and then I'm it's an emotional struggle too it knocks your confidence so this route is more challenging and takes more work but it's going it's more it's a long-term solution. Yes, and that's the thing. It's a long-term solution and you're actually addressing the root cause. So I always tell people, I'm like, are you gonna be patient with this process? Yeah. Because we're really undoing things we've done for so many years and really like building up the body and just optimizing it. So and tweaking. Yes. Because I feel like even, I saw such great results with my skin in the mm-hmm. first couple of weeks and now I'm having this breakout again because I was sick and because I ate off my plan or whatever it may be and now we're kind of tapering it back and figuring out how to fix it um so you do need to be patient and you need to kind of trust the process and um do what feels good and Mm -hmm. take breaks what would you say are some of the most common issues you see in these tests um i see a lot of imbalance in the microbiome Mm -hmm. lack of diversity which is what keeps our microbiome really healthy helps us make all the nutrients we need in the gut. Um, I see nutrient deficiencies, a lot of nutrient deficiencies. So like the two vitamins I was deficient on, Mm -hmm. you would see much more than that. Oh yeah, and I think we talked about that. I was like, oh my God, Mari, this is incredible. You're only deficient in two. I usually have a list of like nine, 10. Wow. When I ran my own a few years ago, I was deficient in like 15. Wow. <laughs> it's like, no wonder I'm exhausted. What are yeah. some of the major vitamins that people are deficient in? B vitamins. Okay. I see a lot of B vitamin deficiencies and some fat soluble vitamins like vitamin D. I know a it, lot of people are deficient in A lot that. of people. Mm-hmm. And the fat soluble ones, you don't want to just guess, you want to test because those, if you just, or if you're just taking vitamin D and you're not sure where you're at, that gets stored in your body and it could become toxic. So, what does fat soluble mean? So there's different categories of vitamins. B vitamins, vitamin C, those are water soluble. And then fat soluble is, so they get absorbed better with a high fat meal. Mm-hmm. Um, they get stored in our body. Water soluble means your body uses it and you just excrete it through your Got urine. Got it. So vitamin D can get stored? Yeah. So vitamin D, A, vitamin K, um, A, D, and vitamin E. A, D, E, K. Yeah, those are all fat soluble vitamins. So they are easily absorbed through um, our diet, but with a high fat diet. And then, um, and you always want to test them. I don't ever give anyone vitamin D without knowing their levels because that could become toxic. And I've seen people where their vitamin D, they've been taking it for years and it's so high. And I'm like, ah. (laughs) <laughs> mine was like yours was borderline <laughs> mine was almost too high yeah because i do take a lot yeah which is great mm-hmm. it's so important for mood it's so important for memory it's so important for hormone production yeah so um it's great that you're on it right but you always i'm like when i put people on a supplement i test three months after just to see how their body's taking it on and how they're managing it and so we don't become toxic how many issues do you see with hormones a lot hormones are one of the main because and we have to think about it this way too a lot of people come to me because they have either acne or they have um, fatigue which could be hormone related so they're coming to me with issues right so then a lot of times their hormones aren't actually like I probably see like two out of ten actual like great your hormones are being detoxed properly because that's the thing we're not just looking at levels we're looking at the pathway so I would say no one's Dutch test is perfect right mm-hmm. because there's always something to work on when it comes to stress our stress response um, our diet mitochondrial support I mean we live in a world that it's changing a lot it has mm-hmm. changed a lot so we have to do whatever we can to kind of bounce off of whatever's going on on the outside 
Um, I see also a lot of food sensitivities, but that also comes from a lack of a healthy gut, right? So I always want to look at food sensitive. It's almost like it's just telling me where the status of your gut is. So lots of food sensitivities. And yours was really good compared to other people's, by the way. My eggs, though. They were pretty high. People, yeah. I mean, my egg sensitivity was like in the red zone. Yeah. Which I have eaten eggs every day for the last seven years, probably. Yeah. What Do you see particular foods show up a lot on food sensitivity tests? Yes. I see gluten show up a lot. Mm -hmm. Wheat, that whole category that's right here, the grains and starches. But gluten and wheat show up a lot. Um, and again, the dairy and eggs show up a lot, too. Yeah. Um, sometimes the nuts. I'm, I, I'm yeah. experimenting with nuts right yeah. now. Which is great that you're avoiding them because yeah. we're just experimenting to see how it shows up on your skin. Yeah, because um, I feel like they may be inflammatory. Because the thing with nuts is, I, I've mentioned this before, but I feel like ancestrally, if we were to go eat nuts, we'd have to peel each one mm -hmm. and it would take hours to eat Yeah, a bunch of nuts, right? We'd probably have a couple, like a small handful. Yes. But now we drink almond milk, we put almond butter on everything. Every protein bar is full of nuts. I did a an analysis of my day mm -hmm. i was eating nuts all day wow. essentially without even realizing it yeah and, and you know what the other issue with nuts is they could have mold which is a toxin you mold. know mold. <laughs> yeah yeah like you've been educating me about mold yeah how often are you seeing mold in people's tests very common because not only could you could you be exposed to it at home and we're, a lot of homes have mold, right? But also through food. So coffee, nuts, um, dried fruit, cereal, different foods could have mold in them that's not visible to the eye. So then, and it impacts everyone very differently. So like, mm. for example, I have issues with my detoxification pathway. So if I'm in a moldy place, within probably three hours i have a migraine or i don't feel good or i'm like oh my god i have brain fog i can't function my mom could probably live in a moldy home and be completely fine because she doesn't have the same issues as i do right she doesn't have the detoxification issues that i have so it's everyone's different. or my sister like we've all been in the same area before but like they're like completely fine and i'm like oh my god i can't function like I, so everyone responds to mold differently, but again, it's still a toxin. And if you have issues with detoxification, your, if your detox pathways are blocked, then that stuff is accumulating in your body. And that's where the issues start. Is that like when someone says they have candida? Candida is different than mold, but it's in the same category. So if you look oh. at it from like a phylum perspective, I don't want to get too scientific with the go back to biology class and no, this is good. high school what is phylum what's phylum so phylum is like looking at in biology class they tell you like we're looking at species when we're looking at um like mold or the different species of mold or bacteria but then it goes up to like phylum kingdom um mm. class i don't even remember i remember okay Do you remember yes. that in it's all coming back yeah it's yeah. all coming back okay so, so candida isn't technically a mold it's not technically a mold but they're in the same category so like when i do a stool analysis in the phylum of like ascomycota there could be fungi there could be candida or mold if i see that in their in stool that wasn't wow. detected on yours so i worry. didn't have yeah that. you didn't have that so we didn't talk about that um but that's another way of seeing if someone has mold in their gut why do you think these issues are popping up for people so frequently hormonal fungi all of it i personally believe it's the conditions of the world we live in again toxins are on a rise mm. um our lifestyle we're multitasking all the time we are under chronic stress all the time whether we know it or not like, I truly believe that 99.9% .9 of the population is living under stress. And we're just not aware of it because we've gotten so used to it. Yeah. There's a lot of people where I do, like, let's say if I'm doing an IV there, I put lots of magnesium in there. And if they get relaxed, they're like, you know, I just didn't like that. I was so sleepy. I'm like, you're just relaxed. <laughs> like, this is what relaxation is. <laughs> it's like we don't even know anymore. We don't know what relaxation feels like. And yeah. it's uncomfortable for a lot of people. So we are just running this world like 
when we're driving, I catch myself even. I'm like on my Instagram if I'm at a red light, checking my emails at a red light. Like I catch myself, I'm like, just why can't I just sit there and breathe? Yeah. Because 10 years ago even, we didn't have social media to the level we have now and we didn't have all the stressors in life and access to everything at our fingertips. So I think we're all in overdrive. And then that affects our detoxification, detoxification pathways. It affects our mitochondrial function. Our cells change based on those things. It's not just genetic. Your genetic responses change based on everything that's coming in. And I truly believe that the issue is the conditions we're living in. It's almost like being still is the most uncomfortable thing for everyone. Yes. Myself included. Yeah. It's the most challenging thing to not touch the phone, to just sit and be with your thoughts. It's like we're all avoiding something. Yes. We're all running away from facing what our problems, our thoughts, being alone, whatever it may be. Yeah. We're all escaping constantly, whether we're addicted to work or alcohol. Everyone has their own vice, right? Absolutely. For, for me, it's work, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, so whenever I get sick, I have this major mental struggle because I feel awful about myself because I'm not able to keep working. And I'm like, well, what am I without work? And then I'm forced to sit there and kind of confront that fear, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's so true. And it's beautiful that you have that awareness, right? That you see that some people aren't even aware that they're avoiding anything. Mm. Like I talk to them and they're like, oh, like everything's good. I'm working this, like blah, 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 blah. The list goes on and there's no awareness of it. The first step is that awareness. And then slowly, you know, you've lived so many years in this pattern and how do we change that and it's with baby steps i truly believe because if we go from one extreme to the other it gets very uncomfortable and it might like you might get so uncomfortable that you never want to face it again or work with a doctor or a practitioner that's willing to help you with that process yeah. then that's why i always say take baby steps even with meditation right i'm like set a timer for one minute we've talked about that right yeah. i'm like journaling set a minute for one minute three minutes whatever you want to do just to introduce that stillness and that processing of our thoughts because that absolutely impacts our body. Yeah, I love the baby steps concept. Yeah. I love it with fitness. I love it with anything in life. And you recommended to me setting a 15 minute timer to read and I've been doing that. Yeah. And I think the timer, now you you told me I'd get excited mm -hmm. to keep going. And I'm, I've reached that point where the 15 minute timer goes off and I'm like, oh, like I, I was really enjoying that reading. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that's a great tip for anyone listening who wants to be more still and, and try and get that to be a part of their routine. Absolutely. So let's talk about my tests okay. and what we are focused on, what looked good, what didn't look good. I guess we should start, what do you think, with the gut? I think let, what we should do is tell your listeners about the overall picture that we're working on because everything's connected yeah right so we did run these tests and they are all so connected so we can start with the gut and emphasize why certain things are coming up and how we're going to see the same things probably show up on your dutch yeah. and on your micronutrients your micronutrients look really good because of the healthy lifestyle you're living so that's one thing that i you know like they look so so good because, At least we like, got that. We you got that. Like I again, I was in awe. I was like, wow, I've never seen someone with this little deficiencies because you have been on top of your supplement game and you really take care of yourself. Everyone so, should go check out Greens if they want that exactly that good vitamin test coming through. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, with the with the microbiome analysis, how much detail do we want to go into? Just go for it. Go for it. Talk about I'm it. I'm not holding anything back, guys. <laughs> I've said so much on this podcast at this point. I'm like, you know what? I'm sharing it with... I love my podcast audience, yeah. and they're going to be into this, so let's just go for it. Let's talk about it. So when I get this test back, I usually... This is the microbiome analysis. I start with the report summary, and it tells me a lot of what we're going to be getting into down the line, but the major things I look for... One of them is alpha diversity, which is the number of species someone has in their microbiome. And the more diverse their diet, and when I say diverse, that's like the more fiber they eat, um, the more 
the less stress that they have and less antibiotic use and um, environmental toxins. The lower all those things are, the better the diversity. And you told me that antibiotics I took six years ago could still be having an impact, correct? Yes. If you take antibiotics and you don't do anything to repair the gut afterwards, because even one round of antibiotics could kill off 90% of your microbiome, just one round. Wow. And I see people with multiple rounds of antibiotics. And listen, I don't have anything against antibiotics because sometimes they play a really important role in saving someone's life. Um, but you got to do things to repair, right? So again, your alpha diversity wasn't the best. We want it in this zone of 8 to 10, and yours was 5.84. So we had some things to work on, but that makes sense, right? Stress. And I think at that point you were avoiding some greens, mm -hmm. right? We started adding more fiber into your diet after this, right? And I wasn't eating a lot of carbs. Yeah, so you were avoiding point. that. Yeah, and I love increasing complex carbohydrates, which are fibers, different types of fibers, right? Um, but then your quality of your microbiome is really good. So the things that you do have, they looked so, so good. The resilience of your microbiome is great. And then some of the functions, which lead to what we're going to talk about, this little baby parasite, but <laughs> <laughs> some of the functions right here tell me a lot about how your gut is doing. So looking at the way your body's breaking down your foods, which we're going to see on this page, because it wasn't flagged because it wasn't terrible. But again, it wasn't the best because I look at patterns. I don't look at actual levels. So if we look, this is one of the most important things. It's called proteolytic fermentation. Proteolytic fermentation looks at how your body breaks down proteins. And um, if I see this trending high the way it is right here, I know that your body's having a hard time breaking down protein or you're eating too much protein. Well, I love protein, right? I want someone to have a well-balanced diet, eat enough protein. But the issue is if these proteins don't get broken down properly, then they're going to make all these byproducts like ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, which cause gas, bloating, damage to the gut lining. And that could be literally the root cause of all of it. Mm. So typically, then I look at lifestyle. How come this person isn't breaking down their proteins? Why do they not have enough stomach acid to break down their proteins? Right? I don't want to just think, hey, I'm just going to give you some digestive enzymes and leave it at that. Yeah, you could be on digestive enzymes for the rest of your life. But I'm going to be like, hey, Mari, what state are you in when you're eating? Because I know you eat a high protein diet. Are you like that was one of the questions, right? I was like, are you in a rush? Do you take a moment to just connect to yourself when you're eating? What are you doing when you're eating? Because your body, you're a young, healthy woman. Your body should be making the digestive enzymes that you need. Yeah. And if you're not, I want to get your body to do it. Yeah. So then you could eat bitters. Like I talked to you about looking at your plate before you eat a meal and really connect to the colors, smell your food. And like just I say a gratitude statement mm. before eating my meals. Like it doesn't have to be related to the meal, but typically it is. I'm like, oh, I'm so lucky I get to eat. Yeah. That by itself. Yeah. I'm lucky I have food in front of me. That takes me out of that place of let's say stress or the last call I had or all the things I have to do with for like the rest of my day and gets me present so that in that state I can produce the right enzymes I love that I think that's so important and I was really bad about that honestly mm -hmm. I'd be like oh I've got four minutes between this meeting and my next one yeah. throw it all in a bowl maybe I'll stay on my laptop I would eat during meetings sometimes mm -hmm. and now I really try when i can to go yeah. and sit outside get some sun no phone honestly be by myself because i'm around people a lot all day yeah. so to be alone and eat my lunch has been really nice for me and i think that's such a good tip for anyone listening who wants to improve digestion exactly because that's where a lot of it starts so let's when we don't have enough enzymes right if we're living in that state like we talked about then other pathogens get an opportunity to also get to your colon yeah. So, for example, I see a lot of people with um, things that belong, pathogens that belong in the mouth or bacteria that belong in the mouth in their stool. And I'm like, how come they didn't kill that off, right? Your stomach acid should have killed it off. 
So that tells me also that they don't have that. You don't have that issue, but you do have a little parasite. So <laughs> thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Guys, I'm here to announce the newest guest on the show, my parasite. Baby B. It starts with a B. <laughs> Baby B. So here's the thing about parasites. We live in an environment like our gut has parasites, candida. We have all these different things living there. It's when they get too high that it's a problem. Because that means that your own gut bacteria wasn't able to maintain a healthy balance. So when you first told me I had this parasite, I thought I had a massive worm in my stomach. Yeah. Not the case, correct? No, not the case. Yeah, we have this visualization of like these big worms coming out of our butt. (laughs) (laughs) No, literally. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. But it's really not the case. It's like, just like a bacteria. The, yeah. It's, okay. it's a form of bacteria. It could be tiny and, you know, and we assume it's this massive scary thing. But really what it tells me is that we need to create more balance in your gut. And based on the rest of your results, it's like sometimes with this parasite, there's also research that it doesn't cause that much damage to yeah. the gut. But to me, I look at the big picture, like how come this had an opportunity to grow? Mm-hmm. So again, lack of digestive enzymes, which it comes from stress. So while we're doing the supplements that we are doing with you, we also want to look at lifestyle. Yeah. And you could make those tweaks and it could be great. So things we're doing to heal the gut. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle for sure. Working on that stress. What supplements are we taking? I want to give people like a little insight into how we're healing the gut. Yeah. So again, lifestyle that we already talked about. We're also doing um, a we're doing a little cleanse for the parasite. We're doing this thing called parabiotic, which again, at first, if you're if the parasite is super comfortable in your gut, it's gonna like react and you're gonna get bloating and you're gonna get uncomfortable. But we want to ease our way into it if that happens. We're also taking a binder. So when the die off happens, you could bind to those toxins and excrete them properly. We're also doing, I do a lot of liver support when I work on the gut because the gut and the liver are connected. Yep. It affects how your body is um, detoxing the things that we're killing off as well. Um, what else? And it affects digestion. Yep. So that's how we're working on your digestion with the liver support. Um, what else are we doing for your gut? I'm trying to remember. I think we're just introducing more diversity. Yes. Yeah. And we're introduced we worked on your diet mm-hmm. and we get I gave you this supp- this supplement called FODMATE which really helps with breaking down high fiber foods for people that have been eating more of a high protein high fat diet. Their body will be like in shock when they start eating fiber because they don't have the bacteria. Yeah, to break it down. Yeah. Um so I like to support my patients in that first month of introducing fiber with the supplement to help them break it down. And then within a month, their body gets used to it. They start growing the bacteria that actually do those things. Like there are certain bacteria that you're low in, ruminococcus, bromide, and flavifacients. Those specifically break down cellulose fiber Mm. and you're low in them, right? So we need to feed them for them to grow. How does these results Mm -hmm. impact all the other results? So. If this diversity is low, if your microbiome is damaged, if you have leaky gut, you're not going to absorb nutrients properly just through your diet. You'll need supplementation. So do I have leaky gut, do you think? So here's the thing. This doesn't test for leaky gut. Um, I personally think that you probably don't have leaky gut based on everything you've been doing for your gut. And because you didn't have too many food sensitivities, if I see this whole, like this is your panel, right? You only have the dairy section, a couple of nuts, and Eggs. gluten, you know? So if typically with people that have leaky gut, I see this whole thing lit up. Okay. And I think you've done so much. You've lived such a healthy lifestyle that you're not there yet. But again, with your gut, it's like, okay, we got to tweak it so you don't get there, right? So in order to have leaky gut Mm -hmm. you would need to be creating damage to the gut repeatedly for a long time yes yes how common is leaky gut very common Hmm. very common and it all starts with lack of diversity and it starts with um a a microbiome that's not robust right which is which comes from lack of diversity It, it comes from stress yeah it comes from eating things continuously that 
your body doesn't agree with. And that creates a distance in your tight junctions of your gut, which then allow the big proteins, the big things that aren't digested to leave your gut and go anywhere in your body. And there's a protein called LPS or a particle called LPS, lipopolysaccharides. That's a part of your regular gram-negative bacteria. And every single time we eat saturated fats, that part of the bacteria changes and it becomes a toxic LPS. And at low levels, that's okay in our gut. But when it becomes really high and then there is a there is like a separation in your gut lining, then those particles can go anywhere in the body, including your brain, your liver, your different organs, your joints. And that's where inflammation starts in different areas. So there's been a link with like Alzheimer's. There has been a link with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Yeah. Gut health seems to impact literally everything. Everything. Why does it impact our hormones? Again, from inflammation. Mm. So it because inflammation starts in the gut, right? So if we're producing all these different things that are leaving the gut and can go anywhere, it could impact your thyroid. It could go literally LPS could go land in the thyroid and impact it. So that's how it impacts that's how it impacts so when we went and looked at my dutch test results we the cortisol was messed up for sure yes we knew that yes let's pull that up the cortisol was and i think i've spoken about this on a different episode but my cortisol was pretty much non-existent yeah so your cortisol isn't terrible i do want to remind you of that not extremely terrible because i've seen worse where like people have really high cortisol at nighttime when they should be going to sleep and they have insomnia right so i guess i'm jaded a little bit because i've seen so many results but i'm like this is not that bad but of course we're gonna work on it right so when we look at the cortisol patterns um we look at waking and then we look at it 30 minutes after waking up and 60 minutes after that right and then afternoon and night So for you, and and this was typical of what you were telling me, because you wake up in the morning, you get to working out, you feel energized, which your cortisol is pretty decent. You know, it could be a little bit higher, a tiny bit higher, and 30 minutes into waking up, your cortisol is still okay, right? But then in the afternoon, that's where your cortisol crashes. Mm. And I remember you mentioning that in the afternoon, your energy gets a little lower. Yeah. So that's what we're working on as well, right? But then... The other part, the metabolized cortisol is really low. So your patterns of how your body's producing it is okay, really low in the afternoon and evening, but your metabolized cortisol is extremely low, which means that I typically see this in people that have been in chronic stress for a very long period of time where their body is just like, I'm not going to metabolize this shit anymore. I'm done. (laughs) My body is over my shit at this point. Which I now I'm like, I get it. Because after talking with you and doing some of the energy work, and I we have so much to talk about. I think we have to do a part two because we're already at 45 minutes. No! I know. Insane. (laughs) But now that I have more self-awareness when it comes to my stress levels, all of this is making sense to me because as mm-hmm. healthy as I eat and all the right things I do, yeah. if I don't look at the energy that I have in my body, which you're a big fan of Chinese medicine. Yes. Can you just tell us quickly oh, yes. what Qigong is? We have to talk about it. Yes. Yes. So I get chills every time it comes up because I love talking to you about it because you're super interested in it now. Um, so Qigong is a form of meditation that includes breath. It includes movement, and it also includes visualization. So, um, so it works on our body on a like it does all three at the same time, right? So you're doing these different movements using your breath, and also visualizing, connecting to the earth energy, which really recharges us, and also the sky energy, the heaven energy. We call it the heaven energy. It's, there's nothing religious about it. Um, So I started learning this a few years ago um, when I got into meditation. I got into meditation about 12 years ago. But it is my favorite work to do because it's ancient. Like this, the history of Chinese energetic medicine, I mean, it dates like more than 3,000 years ago. 
And my teacher, Dr. Jerry Allen Johnson, he is just incredible. Like the stories he shares with us, the way he teaches this work, incredible. And the changes I've seen in patients that do Qigong or that are open to it, it's vital. It's it's incredible. Um, one of the things I like about it, it, it addresses the way we think mm. and the way we hold on to our stories. Because the way... The, our body, we have three bodies. Okay, we're going to get crazy here. Let's Are your listeners ready? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we have three bodies. We have a physical body, we have an energetic body, and we have a spirit body. And you want to address all three of them, right? So we're working on the physical body when we're doing these tests, which is very important. But if we don't address the energetic and spirit body, which is where our thoughts, our beliefs, our stories that we tell about ourselves, that's where they're stored. And from the Chinese energetic perspective, we have five organs that are really impacted by this. So the organs are liver, lungs, heart, kidneys, and spleen. Mm. And each one has like a virtuous energy that it has that like before you were born into this world, that's the energy it carries. And then when we're born into this world with all the ego stuff, like this is the world we live. It's, it's a normal part of being a human right yeah. then we take on different energies that correlate with the organs as well so then if we stuff those energies or those emotions and we hold on to them and we repress them then it impacts our physical health yeah. so and what's so interesting is when you were talking about this with me and did qigong on me you could see that my liver was struggling and then i went and got acupuncture and she told me the same thing. Yes. So that blew my mind because honestly, I had had not much experience with Chinese medicine before meeting you and going to acupuncture. And now mm -hmm. I'm like, my mind is blown and I can't wait to keep learning more. It's so cool. And we also saw it on your labs. Yeah. Your liver enzymes were slightly elevated. Yeah. Right. She knew. Yeah. She and literally yeah. knew just by she didn't even really touch me she mm -hmm. was just like feeling my energy over my body and she could see and what does the liver represent again anger resentment disappointment makes you more irritable <laughs> like you jump goes from zero to a hundred yeah yeah and a lot of us anger is a big thing that we all repress because we associate it with just a bad thing but anger just shows you where you need to set your boundaries but i think from a younger age we've all been taught that no, you can't get angry. And then we all learn to suppress this emotion. So there are healthy ways to express our anger, right? And that's what we need to learn to do. And in Qigong, like let's say I do the table work on someone, then we could work on letting go of anger through the different exercises. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, I do the five yin exercises to kind of regulate all my organs. And then sometimes if I work on my liver too much, then I notice I'm like, oh my God, I, a lot of anger is coming up. And then it's like, then I become aware of how much I have been suppressing. Yeah, Liver is a big one for me too. And by the way, when our liver gets impacted, it also shows up on our skin and it impacts our hormones as well. It's all connected mm -hmm. and I can't believe, I, I, I just think it's mind blowing that, you know, yes, we can take the supplements, we can change the diet, we can do all the things, but if we're not working on the energetic body too, we won't see the results we want. Absolutely. And and listen, I am a big believer in that because of the type of patients I see. I see a lot of healthy patients that are living a healthy lifestyle, doing all the things, mm -hmm. right? And then they're like, but this one thing is not improving. And when we do, you know, we address the physical body and then we go deeper and talk about, okay, let's talk about what happened when you were seven, for example, yeah. right? Or let's talk about what happened when you were 10 or 12. For me, it was seven that I'm still holding on to, yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's like, how are we expressing that? How are we dealing with it? Because another thing that I learned in Qigong and Chinese energetic medicine was that if we have any unresolved traumas that we haven't really let go of, forgiven, really looked at, then anything that slightly pushes that same button of like boundaries recreates the same emotions as that trauma happening again. 
Yeah. So that is what's happening in our body on a chemistry, on a biochemistry level as well. Because our thoughts, our beliefs are just recreating that. And I, I look at it this way. Your body wants to help you heal. Like your body is your biggest advocate. It's like it, it tries to keep you from dying, right? It's like let's do what we can to keep her healthy. And I believe that certain times, certain situations come up for us that allow us to look at the things that are hidden. So if we have a lot of anger in us because of some repressed emotion or repressed trauma that happened that we're not looking at, situations will come up that show you that you have that anger. Yeah. And we almost recreate it on our own. Yes. Because yes. it's sitting in there and we keep recreating it and reliving the trauma. Yes. Dr. Wayne Dyer is one of my most favorite people. And he used to say this. He would say, if you squeeze an orange, you're going to get orange juice. You're not going to get apple juice. So if you put a person under pressure and they get angry, it's because there's already anger in them. Mm-hmm. Right? So we need to look at why that's there. Yeah. You're not going to get joy out of someone who has under pressure if joy comes out you know? yeah it's it's then they don't have any of that but most of us have it in some sort of way and again trauma doesn't have to be something massive i was listening to this podcast yesterday that they were talking about she was like bullying was her trauma right and that impacted her so every single time she gets let down that whole traumatic event comes up yeah so anyway, I could talk about this for I know hours. Me too. And <laughs> honestly, I think we need to do a part two because we didn't even get to the fan questions and people had so many good questions for oh. you. So you'll have to come back. Okay. Now it's time for the question we ask every guest. Mm-hmm. I started this podcast because I believe everyone's pursuit of wellness looks different. What does wellness mean to you? Wellness means to me, wellness is peace to me. Wellness is when I'm energized at peace and just ground it that's wellness to me love it and I get that with my morning routine oh yeah 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 you're big on the morning routine yeah and you got me back into journaling I've gratitude journaled every day since our meeting Mm -hmm. and it's incredible I love that we need to do a whole episode on morning routine I know we have so much more (laughs) we literally need to do a part two part three where can people find you online? Like if people wanted to chat with you Mm -hmm. or maybe do a consultation, I know you're pretty much only in LA right now, but Mm -hmm. I'll I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, so on Instagram, it's dr.sam.nd. My website is safawellness.com. And yeah, I do virtual consults. I'm licensed in California and Washington state. So those are the two places I could see patients. Um, A lot of people reach out for just... um, not give not doing all these laps for them but just to understand what's going on if i could give them tips we could also do that so reach out and i can help guide you either find another doctor in your area or in any way i can and and this isn't done yet but i'm working on creating a um, platform where people can order these tests and then book a consult to just review them and to understand their body better i think it's so needed i think everyone listening will be so excited about that and i will be sure to link your website in the show notes for anyone looking thank you dr sam that was incredible thank you for having me mari